All right. So the next user is Zezman. And Zezman says, can you explain the Basho phase of the roadmap? I think a lot of people are under the impression that with the release of Shelly, Cardano is ready. Users are staking and scaling isn't a consideration anymore. What does Basho do for Card Cardano in terms of scaling and what does its implementation look like? Thanks for your time and keep up the good work. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with themes and then Charles, please jump in with some more details. So Basho is about scaling. We do think that even just with Shelly and Gogan, we'll have, uh, I don't want to put numbers on the board, but we'll have some impressive performance numbers. But as Charles already said, that you, you don't ever stop. We'll never stop looking at scaling. Um, and so there's, there's more approaches we can use. We already get a reasonable amount of scale because of the efficiency of the Ouroboros proof of, of stake. Uh, consensus algorithm, it, it, it is just naturally faster and more efficient. And so that helps a lot. But then on top of that, there's two kinds of scaling. And so one is, you know, think of the checkout lines in the supermarket. You just add more checkouts, right? So now you've got more people going through. And so that's horizontal scaling. Vertical scaling is when you add something in place to make one single line go faster. And those are vertical solutions. An example of a vertical solution is Lightning Network, which is uh, uh, which is on Bitcoin and other other networks, including Cardano, is is looking at adding, and so um, that allows for things to go faster through one checkout line. And so uh, we're gonna we will be focused on both. We will be both doing our own original research and and looking at our own original solutions, but also adopting uh, uh, the best thinking from the industry. This is not going to be a, a only invented here shop for those kind of things. There's a lot of really smart people working on those problems, and we'll be uh, uh, looking at what they're coming up with. Yeah, we, we wrote some papers on this already. Um, you know, for cross-chair communication, it's really useful to have proofs that when you look at something coming from a foreign chain, whether it be a shard or it be an actual other blockchain, that you know what you're looking at is right, and you can validate that quickly. And that's the whole point of Nipa POWs and the point of proof of stake side chains. And then we wrote another paper called Parallel Chains, where we had a kind of a discussion of the relationship between latency and throughput and how these things can uh, be put into a kind of a trade-off profile. It's no longer the case where sharding is a green field, you know, let's go do something and invent, reinvent the wheel type of a deal. There are dozens of legitimate ideas and projects and peer-reviewed papers that already exist, in some cases already being implemented, that have very clear benefits, uh, whether that be rapid chain or that be uh, Omniledger or you know these types of things. They exist, they're real. And it's, it's not a question of, can we do this? It's now more so of a question of, what are we willing to give up to get there? Uh, for example, uh, you would want to still preserve a lot of Byzantine resistance, but you really can't be, do better than a third the minute that you shard. In some cases, you go down to a quarter, depending upon the nature of the algorithm. So we immediately go from 50% down, and that's probably okay, especially if you have other mechanisms within your system to, that help bridge that gap. The other thing is that when you're dealing with shards, generally you do admit some sort of a coordination committee. So uh, one of the properties you look for with shards is this concept of pairwise disjoint transactions. So what that means is that if uh, you, you take something in shard A and something in shard B, then they should not have overlap, meaning that Alice's transaction is in both of those shards. They should be disjoint from each other. They're completely unique. The only way that happens in practice is if there's some sort of serializer, some sort of committee that has a God's eye view of everything. And it makes proactive decisions about which buckets get to do various things. It also helps you coordinate communication between these so that you don't have this enormous overhead. Uh, so how you build that has a lot to do ultimately with the throughput of the system, the censorship resistant properties of the system, and also it's an additional bucket you have to incentivize. Uh, and there's, there's unique security and privacy implications with these types of systems. Finally, as David mentioned, uh, you know, there's things you can do off the chain. Uh, Vitalik is dumping money into Starkware as, as Intel Ventures and other big VC guys because Elie Van Sassen and his guys are saying we can bundle lots of stuff together off chain with Star Starks and you can only validate a little thing on chain but then you have all this magic happening somewhere else and we can get a more distributed system this way. And these are entirely reasonable approaches. 
So you have to not have a one-size-fits-all solution. Rather, what you do is you say, all right, what is the state of the art the ecosystem has? And that's what we're basically going to put a flag in the ground with Ouroboros Hydra, where there will be a boatload of citations and a boatload of discussion about competing papers. And we make our decision of where's that sweet spot for trade-offs. And the nice thing is the Ouroboros design is quite easy to shard if we want to do that. And we'll just put that down there. And there's already some pre-theory that we've done. We're just cleaning up a few of these old things, like we're getting Ouroboros polished for journal submission, and we're uh, dealing with Kronos and Thos. Those are almost out. And then there's also uh, spikes of dishonest majority. And once we get past that, then the next very next thing is the sharding side of things. And that'll be done throughout the summer. But then after you put that flag in the ground, you say, this is the way we're going to do it. Then you have to say, okay, well, how do we want to make that 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 checkout line faster? And so uh, Rob Cohen, uh, he's one of our product managers, is working exclusively at analyzing the Lightning Network and seeing if we can add this in as an additional capability to Cardano. And then we're also looking very heavily at Snarks and Starks and other zero knowledge uh, and also MPC solutions. So we had a guy named Sandro, and he's a researcher out of um, uh, Switzerland, and he's basically looking at the MPC space and seeing if there's something we can bring in. And Markov Kohlweiss has already published something called Sonic, uh, but we have other zero-knowledge proofs that we're developing and other techniques we're developing. We're even implementing them, and we may be able to bring some of those techniques to do exactly what Eli Van Sassen is doing with Starkware uh, for Cardano. So we're not picking a one-size-fits-all. Rather, we're saying, let's borrow as much as we can, because this is mostly a solved problem at this point, and everybody's kind of converging to the same collections of solutions. Uh, and then let's add some unique twist that we think is uh, we get to do because Ouroboros was properly designed. Uh, and then for, let's clean up the mess a little bit. So let's make sure that we don't give up too much in the process of getting additional performance. Uh, so, uh, so that's what Basho is all about. Uh, and uh, it'll make the system very different. Uh, it'll make the incentive scheme a little different because you'll have additional actors to reward. You'll no longer have a thousand state pools. You'll have you'll actually have incentives to have a lot more. And then you'll have different kinds of actors that are doing different things. It'll add a lot more sophisticated crypto likely into the ledger. Uh, and then we'll also perhaps have uh, layer two solutions that come in alongside that. So the existence of lots of state pools make those systems more federated and faster. And that some composition of all these things will be Basho. So we'll get it started in 2020. But it's going to be a conversation the space is having for years, 2025, 2030. People are still going to be coming up with great innovations and great ideas. And uh, that's the advantage of having high, lots of competition in a very fertile environment. And we're in a pretty good position because we, we kind of see everything. We go to every conference. Uh, we talk to every developer. So there's nothing at this point that's going to surprise us that just comes out. And they say, oh, my God, we didn't know this MacGuffin can solve everything. We, we know of these things. And we know that uh, researchers who are developing these things, like, for example, Rapid Chain is a very good sharded BFT protocol. When we presented Ouroboros Genesis at CCS, they presented right after us. Literally, the very next presentation was their presentation. So we literally could just walk five feet and go talk to these people that have been thinking about sharding for two years and have a deep and detailed conversation with them. And, and so we kind of know where the state of the art is. And it's just a matter of putting our flag on the ground of what are we willing to live with as an ecosystem without trading our principles.